So now that we know our app is super slow with super problems, and, and it's a super app, what we can do about it and what I can do about my time to ship. And before jumping into conclusions and some solutions, it's worth to realize that in fact, we are dealing with organizational issues, excessive communication, sharing resources, onboarding, conflicts, and who owns what. Okay, so uh, let's get to some possible solutions. And the uh, solution to many organizational issues is uh, better organization through thought out infrastructure and decentralization of ownership and deployments and more, uh, which is made possible by that infrastructure. So for example, server solved these with microservices and on the web, uh, developers solved it with microprononts. Uh, since with React Native, we bring so much of the of our ideas from the web um, to mobile uh, development, maybe we could leverage micro frontends there as well. Uh, let's let's think about it. Uh, to bring true micro frontends to the mobile, we need dynamic code delivery because we don't want to ship users unnecessary code. And Android supports us in a form of feature delivery, which is quite limited and not generally encouraged by the platform itself. And both platforms, however, support WebView to load web content dynamically. And this is what Uber and Alipay are doing, for example. Uh, it has its benefits, uh, but we lose the native feel of the platform. And, and finally, we can leverage hybrid JavaScript frameworks like React Native that happen to run a dynamic language, which we can load over the air and update during runtime. Thank you, JavaScript. Uh, and to handle the dynamic loading, we need a bundler that supports it. With React Native, we typically use Metro, which is great and optimized for the framework. However, it doesn't yet support dynamic code loading at least not officially. However, there is a bundler that supports this use case very well. And it's also very well known on the web. And it's Webpack with first class support for remote code loading. And specifically related to micro frontends, it supports a really, really nice feature, which is module federation. I told you that web solve micro frontends but what I didn't tell you is the obvious thing. There is no single solution and they all have trade-offs. Uh, the one that we found has the best overall, overall uh, developer experience is module federation. It introduces uh, separate builds for the same app, allowing for more independent teams and deployment and sharing code between the apps without ever touching NPM to do so. Uh, actually, on our podcast, the React Native Show podcast, which I'm a host of, uh, I had a pleasure to host uh, Zach Jackson, who is maintainer of uh, of Webpack and actual an author of Module Federation in Webpack. So in this episode, we were discussing Module Federation and Webpack specifically. So if you want to know more, uh, I would ask Marta to link the the this show in the in the chat and in the email after this webinar. Also on this podcast episode, we had a guest, uh, Pavel Trisła, who is an author of uh, Repack, uh, which is our next generation attempt to bring Webpack to React Native. Uh, to implement module federation in React Native, we needed to rewrite its pre pre predecessor whole from scratch uh, by shifting more responsibility to the users and leveraging the plugin system of the React Native CLI that our team just rebuilt at that time. We could focus on bringing necessary web compatible Webpack plugins to React Native while improving compatibility with the React Native framework itself. 
And why are we talking about Repack is because with this tool, we can build something more specific than a typical super app. We can build federated super apps optimized for dynamic feature delivery and shipping fast. So thanks to Repack, our app can still grow in functionality that's relevant only to particular users without having all users to pay the cost of app size. At the same time, it allows for small lean teams like the green and red here that can work in isolation on their features or so-called mini apps, even in separate repositories. The teams can choose whether to run the full app or just work in scope environment of their own mini applications. We found most developers prefer isolation, which, is, which allows for faster feedback loop onboarding and less disruption. However, it's not required to use separate repositories. There are themes that thrive in modern repos and can help handle its apps and the complexities. There's quite an even split in the proponents of monorepos and polyrepos also at Callstack, and module federation supports both at the same time. Uh, what's important here is for the teams to be able to deploy their code at their own pace without being blocked by others. And for the host app to be able to pick the versions it wants to load over the air. To ensure the host app loads your code, not tampered by backed actors, Repack signs all the remote JavaScript bundles similar to code push. It's automated and you're the one in control. Uh, it's almost like we develop for the web browser. Think about it. A user, your users can get latest bug fixes and features without doing anything and without re-downloading the whole bundle that can easily get up to 40 megabytes for apps like Discord. And this is what would happen with tools like CodePush. And picking the correct version or a feature re requires coordination with a server that serves the bundles. We also need some kind of automation for the deployment and module federation in React Native requires some runtime setup as well. And since Repack is bare bones toolkit for uh, Webpack plugins and loaders, which gives you lots of freedom, we recently open sourced a showcase for you to try. Uh, providing all the necessary wiring for a federated super app. Check the experience, run it locally, read the code, and file some issues if you see something off. Your product shouldn't ship slower just because it's big. Uh, Repack and Module Federation can rewire your teams and change the way they work for better. And what's most important, ship fast again. Of course, there are some gotchas. So for example, this solution is for the for big teams only. Uh, we rarely see uh, teams smaller than 30 front-end engineers working on the same app that would need this kind of architecture. Um, you will need an infra team that will handle deployments, dependencies, upgrades, and all of that. Although you probably have this team if, you're, um, if your app is, is that big already. Uh, there is also no lazy loading for, for native, native code. We only load the JavaScript bundles. So all the na native modules that your mini apps are using need to be bundled with your host application. And Apple won't like the fact that you're shipping new features without them knowing uh, in a regular release process. So you may be cautious around that. And to recap, the super apps are just big apps shipping loads of features for everyone, usually statically or with web views. Federated super apps are optimized for dynamic feature delivery and shipping only necessary code to the users. Code that renders fully native experiences thanks to React Native. 
they use repack and module federation to orchestrate building and releasing modules independently. All this dynamic code is code signed. Both monorepos and polyrepos are supported. And we have a reference showcase repo for you to try.